Um, I resigned, I was not fired. <laughs> um, there's a gentleman I would like to open. He's a British philosopher and uh, archaeologist, um, T.L. Uh, Lawrence. He made a special quote, what I was going to conclude with that quote, but I'd rather open with it. And um, he says, all men dream, but not equal. And those who dream at night through the dusty recesses of their mind wake up to realize, oh, it was all in vain. But they are daydreamers, like you and I, very dangerous people who dream with their eyes open just to realize that they can make their dreams come true with their eyes wide awake. I speak of this because some of us, we leap by just imagination. Some of us make a leap by circumstances. Um, if you do know, in South Africa every year, all leaders meet in parliament on a, an occasion called the State of the Nation Address. And I've been following it so attentive that I even went to parliament myself to actually be an active citizen and hold our leaders accountable to some of the promises they make. But this year, it must have been difficult because if you can recall, uh, we had two state of the nation address. And we all know what's distinct about this event is the longest red carpet in the continent. So for those leaders who has one outfit a year, they had to get two designers this year in February and in June. But while I was there, I paid attention to the amount of budgets allocated towards transformation, which going to sums up my uh, conversation today. I want to talk about the power of the value chain. When you listen to some of these amazing allocations of budgets that are made into the arts, that are made into infrastructure, you ask yourself, when a year ends, you've got to give a report. We gave um, Ebenezer 100 million towards the development of comedy. We gave Thibaut Touch 20 million for his movie. I then sat with the chairman of the NFVF, who happens to be my uncle. So I've never asked him for funding, <laughs> just to be clear. And I said, on average, how much do you fund a movie? He says, you know, six to eight million rents per producer. We're trying to build a black uh, filmmakers community. And then I look at, in that six million, you allocate towards that black filmmaker. Do you know that 5.4 million of it goes towards service providers who don't plow back into transformation? So you have 600,000 rand left for your thoughts to manifest. But who really got empowered if the funding is allocated in the ba on the basis of transformation? I'm talking about value chain. You don't own the red cameras to produce the Black Panthers of this world. You don't own the lighting companies. You don't own the type of equipment or infrastructure that says the transformation budget or whatever we allocated towards transformation went and benefited Mantua, Tabiso, Lerato, or Mokwenas and Sons, okay? A few weeks ago, I received a call from my banker for those who are interested at Bank with APSA. Mr. Mulefe, we'd like to congratulate you. Your bond has been approved, but you need to go and sign with uh, Fenter and something attorneys. So I said to my banker, why don't I choose my own? I got my own attorneys and they're right down the road. I would like to choose this transaction to be dealt with somebody I relate with. No, the bank already made a decision on the money, they say they approved you. But if you think about it, that's the money you are paying. Therefore, you should decide who is your bond attorneys. I'm sure some of you have bought prop, uh, property, and for those who are still planning, you will be applying for funding, and the banks are going to tell you which attorneys should actually structure your deals. Now, I said to him, on the panel of your attorneys, how many of them, I mean, I mean how many of them are black? And how many of them that... I get to choose to say, in your selection, let me probably go with this amazing lady. Um, I see Mudise and Sons. But banks make decisions for you. Then the thought hit my mind, and I tweeted this morning, 
a bottle of Kanye's gin. And for those who know, I'm in the gin business. I walk to the store, spa, and we all say to our followers, support my new venture. God is good. I've got this amazing product that's on the market. Fair enough. You've got an amazing product with your name on it. But the truth of the matter is, who owns distribution? Whose packaging are you using? The bottling company, who owns it? So when you purchase, I'll use me for example, when you purchase my product, it's probably listed for 300 bucks on the shelf. I probably make 15 rands on that bottle. And the rest of the 285 of my craft doesn't plow back into culture. So when you congratulate me for being able to come up with products and being an entrepreneur, the truth of the matter is our economy is ran on the back end. And the front end, which is us, 80, 67 million people, plus our lovely foreigners, we need to embrace them, it has increased. And the truth of the matter is, with the buying power we have, we don't have the economic power. Lastly, when I was in New York, I sat with uh, Professor Dr. Chika Onyeni, who is a Nigerian author. He wrote a book called The Capitalistic Nigger. And one of the most interesting things he illustrates in the book he speaks on the buying power versus the producing, the buying power in juxtaposition to the producing power. Africans are the biggest consumers. And whenever you challenge people to produce, it's a journey from Egypt to the promised land that none of us want to embark on. But the truth of the matter is, if we are going to speak on transformation, if we are going to reimagine ourselves being the drivers of this economy, we have to start owning the value chain. Until you own the value chain, you are nothing but a great number or a statistic that is adding to buying and not producing. So it's not enough to celebrate House of Bonan. It's not enough to celebrate David Lale. It's not enough to celebrate Tibo Touch or DJ's Boo. Because the very same people who are on the front end making these amazing leaps in society coming from the hardship we come from, we have the same common struggle. We still benefit the least in the value chain, but yet we are the ones that are driving the economy. So part of my question, how many of us, when we consume a product or we take something off the shelf, we ask ourselves, how many people benefited in producing this item? You go to cinema, Bless Us is coming out for those who are interested. I produced the movie. It's coming out October 25th. It's going to be on cinema. A 13 million, 15 million rent budget movie. But I can rest assure you, service providers, you have all black star cast on stage making the movie. Actors are the least paid. The ones who own the cameras, the ones who own the lighting, those who own the insurances, are the ones who are benefiting the most out of our craft. And it's a sad reality, but when I listen to every minister on how much they allocate towards transformation, it's not enough to put money in the pocket of a black person if that person does not participate in the value chain. So I'm urging you for us to balance the scale. I'm not inciting uh, no form of support for other brands or other groups of people. But as my brother previously said, I listened to him very well and he struck a nerve and, and I want us to be very, very cautious when we use words such as transformation. Imagine living in a society where you know that the very same vegetables that I'm cooking tonight are sourced from a farm of an uncle or a distant friend who is supporting X family and that family that he's supporting is benefiting because they have their child in a UJ campus who's probably studying agriculture, who's gonna plow back in creating a legacy or building a business or increasing its turnover. So we could all be here participating as active citizens, be happy to live in a democratic society. But the truth of the matter is transformation we haven't even dealt with the subject. We probably might have dealt with having access to budgets, 
But if we don't have access to infrastructure, if we don't have access to systems, if we don't challenge our policies, if we don't engage our leaders on the policy making roundtable discussions, as you mentioned earlier, my brother, that they had in Georgia, if we don't participate at that level, we are going to increase the level of poverty instead of being active in wealth generation. We're going to start making or finding ourselves making the same rhetoric and statements that we alleviated poverty by making sure that we gave Lavoyo 10 million to start her business. After Lavoyo gets that 10 million to start her business, the one who funds you dictates who is going to do your audit and who's going to do your legal. I am going through that myself. So I'm not just giving a story. I'm telling you a reality that exists, which you need to go and apply yourself and probably be a better generation than we are. Because unfortunately, we didn't have a navigational tool when we signed contracts with some of the brands that we endorse. You learn as you go. But as TEDx come and give us the opportunity to talk about this, we realize that we have to sow and be at peace that we might not be there to reap. You in the audience, you have the challenge and an opportunity to be out there, apply what you heard, and make sure that you're part of the solution. So from a spirit of coerciveness in building a better South Africa, I need us to be very aware and open our minds, understand, don't just judge things at face value because there's more going on than meet the eye. Next time when you applaud someone and say you're a hard worker, like that Mavis who works five hours, who's supposed to be also living in the north, having a particular um, postal code or living in a particular square meter address, that, five, that hard work is not enough because the truth of the matter is we can work as hard, build brands as much as we want if we don't understand the power of the value chain and don't question who owns who. You are forever going to keep empowering the back end. And we as African people, let me be specific, as black people, we are far from even balancing the scale. Don't get comfortable with just having a nice, comfortable security or salary, living month to month. It's not enough. We are not going to build legacies on the current policy and systems that are put in place. And I would like to challenge the IDCs of this world, the NFVFs, to really interrogate when you fund someone, when you go and apply for funding, ask yourself, where is your money going into? Who is benefiting? You being the recipient. I'm gonna close with a very interesting phrase that I'll have to have more time to explain, but it is a sad reality when the beneficiaries are not sensitive to the struggle of the benefactor in handling the benefits. If I'm standing here and I do not understand for me to be a beneficiary of being in a democratic society and I misuse the privilege of living in this era, it is an insult for those who sacrifice their time to put South Africa in a position that we are in today. So as all of us being beneficiaries, don't get excited by benefits unless you understand the struggle that your benefactor went through. For us to shape South Africa, to being a better economy, it's not fair to have one sector of this country controlling what happens in Gauteng. Decisions cannot be made in Cape Town for what needs to happen in Limpopo, but it's the responsibility of the people in Limpopo to start being very much psychologically aware in how we spend our money and how we even pay attention to those dotted lines when you sign your next home loan or student fees, whatever it is that enables you to leap to the next. Don't just get excited by being able to be afforded the opportunity to make that leap. When you make that leap, do you keep the door open for those coming behind you to walk through the very same door of your wisdom? These are the questions we must ask ourselves. I'm tired of being celebrated in my family. I don't want to go to a family gathering and all eyes on me. If your gift does not transform the people around you, why are you gifted? It is not about you. I know, right? 30 seconds left. <laughs> and they're saying 10 seconds left. But the next time, I would like to see a TEDx of exchange of thoughts, where we are here on a dialogue, not listening to me because you all got something to give. 
question the value chain, you will transform not just the people around you, but you will transform the entire country. I pride myself to be invited. Thank you, UJ, and thank you for being a great audience. My name is Tibo Touch. <laughs>